This is uh, in the Office section, Chapter 1, Introduction to Microsoft Office 2013 Features, and we are beginning Project B on page 92. I have already opened Word, and if you're going to be using this computer a lot, uh, you should probably right-click on Word down here. And I've already got it pinned to the taskbar, and so you're message should say pin this program to the taskbar and if you click on that it will remain there and then you don't have to go searching for it every time so uh, take the programs that you use a lot and when they're on the taskbar down here just right click on them choose pin to taskbar and uh, they'll always be available with one click okay now what we want to do is we want to open a file so let's go to our file tab up here and we're going to choose open and uh, this is on my computer and you remember we created a folder, uh, we'll do browse because in case this doesn't show up on your computer. So we'll do browse and when it gives us the dialog box for opening a file, we will select desktop and then we will select um, CSC 110 and uh, we want office features and we want this rehearsal dinner uh, the DOCX file extension may not appear on yours but you should have the blue word icon so so either double click on that or click on it once and then click on open and it will open the document that we're going to work with in part B Okay, and um, because I got this from the internet, uh, it's making me click on that. Okay, and they tell you to make sure that this is pushed in, and I think that's always a good idea when you're editing uh, so you know why your document looks the way that it looks. And we want to go to our file tab right away here, and now we're in what they call backstage view and we want to click Save As. This is how you change a file's name, make or actually make a copy of it with a new name. And we're going to go to the same folder. And um, for the name of it, uh, we are going to delete this first business here and we're going to replace it with our last name so put your last name underscore then your first name underscore 1b and then underscore rehearsal dinner should already be there and click on save and the advantage of doing that is now if you go back and look we've still got our original document so if you want to go back and start over again the original is there and um, you've got your updated copy so you've got two versions um, now we're going to skip objective 8 and we're going to go to objective 9 on page 95 and uh, what we want to do is we want to go to the view tab up here and uh, this lets you decide what you're going to see on the screen and um, there should be our quick access toolbar is up here and at the end uh, there's a little down arrow here that lets us customize it so click on that and then let's turn to page 96 and it says on the list click print preview and print and there's no checkbox next to that now if I click on it uh, now I've got a print preview button up there and if I go back to the down arrow uh, the check mark is there and if I click on it again which I'm not going to do uh, it would remove the check mark so it's just a toggle to turn it on and off and make it visible or not visible in your quick access toolbar now we're on page 96 number 5 and I want to click to the left of the S in skyline which is where I'm already at and um, press enter one time to insert a blank paragraph and then hit the up arrow to move up to that top line and uh, now on the ribbon click on the insert tab and this is where you go to insert um, pictures and a bunch of other things and we're going to go to online pictures and we'll get this dialog box which should look similar to 
the picture on the top of page 97. Now ours does not have um, that very first box. I'm not sure why, but we're not going to worry about it. And um, well, it wants us to click in that box that we don't have, I think. Um, so we're going to go out to Bing and search on Bing. And we look for salad in a bowl and hit enter. And we will get a bunch of pictures of salad in a bowl. And we can specify the type here. I'm going to narrow this down a little bit. Click on type. And I want uh, clip art. So let's just choose clip art. And then I'll get rid of uh, photographs for us. And uh, I'm looking to see if we've got the same one that they show us in the book. And um, I'm not seeing it here. Okay, so we will just, uh, let's pick one. So it looks like they've got a green salad. So we'll pick, uh, we'll pick this one. And now we've got it selected. And now let's go down and click on insert down here at the bottom. And when you have a picture selected, you get picture tools appearing up here. And these are pretty much the same regardless of which application you're using in Office. And what we want is we want to go to Wrap Text here, and we want to choose Top and Bottom. Okay. And actually, they wanted to click on this one and choose square, tight, uh, top and bottom is this one. So there's two ways to get there. I usually go up here to wrap text. So select that and then click on here. There, yeah, click on close. And now in the picture styles group here, if you click on the more button, this little down arrow here, um, we want to point to the first style and display the screen tip. And if you pause, it'll t every one of these has a unique name. And it'll show you the name. And what we want to do is we want to go to the, just look at all of these here and watch the names that pop up. And usually you can tell if you're, if you're looking for something that says black border, well, you know, it's going to be, you know, like this one or this one or this one or this one. Probably you don't need to check all of them. Uh, we want the one called beveled matte white. So let's click on that and that just puts a little white border around it and it actually makes it look kind of 3D. Um, and what we want to do is we want to save that. So let's go to our little floppy disk up here and save it. And it looks like I missed an instruction somewhere. Um, looks like I missed the center. So let's uh, drag it over here and you know there's uh, there's usually some lines that show up that help us figure out if we've got it centered or not. Um, but we can also just go up here and click on the center button. And, okay, why is that not working? Let's try center. Okay, let's try clicking down here and now click on center. And that still didn't do it. Let's. Okay. Well, according to the book, those guidelines are supposed to show up, and I'm not seeing the guidelines show up. Um, so, I'm thinking maybe what I need to do is go up above it here, and maybe I mean, hit the left arrow key. Clicking didn't seem to do any good. And you know what? Uh, I'm going to drag it down just below the paragraph mark here and now let's see if we can center our picture and we can't center our picture. Let's go to format here and let's go to align and we'll try it this way then and okay so that's the way we have to do it and I'm going to delete this whoops let's do a control Z here to undo that and let's take this and just drag it up so that paragraph mark is down below. 
Okay, um, so now our document, you know, except for the fact that our picture is a little different, should look like um, the top of page 99. And now we're going to go to 1.13 on the middle of page 99. And um, if you bounce on the Alt key once, um, it basically takes you up to the ribbon here and shows you which letter you can choose instead of using the mouse to click on an option. And uh, N is for insert. Um, I don't see I being used for anything else, but for some reason uh, they didn't use I. So let's do N and it'll bring up the insert tab, uh, the insert ribbon rather, and um, then we're going to hit escape. We're not actually going to do anything there, we're just, they're just showing us how it works, and hit escape uh, twice if you have to, and um, now it says point to any tab on the ribbon and right click to display a shortcut menu. So let's uh, right click and we get a little shortcut menu of a few things that we can do here. And it says collapse the ribbon. Okay, I don't think you're going to use this very often. I almost never use it. Uh, it just lets you see a little more stuff on the screen. And if you want to um, get it back again, uh, there's a little arrow up here. And if you click on that and tell it that you want to show the tabs and the commands, um, it will bring them all back again. And I think you're going to want that probably 99% of the time. Okay, now we're on page 100 and we're going to do activity 1.14. I'm going to change the page orientation and zoom level. Uh, that's on the page layout tab here for page orientation. And we've only got two choices, so this is a pretty easy one if you choose landscape. Um, now it just rotated the piece of paper and uh, we've also got a zoom slider down here right now it's on 130 percent on my computer and if i shrink it down enough times eventually i will see everything now this did not remain centered for some reason so i'm going to go click on it get my picture tools and i'm going to try align i'm going to try align center again and now it gets realigned Okay, so now we should look pretty much like the picture on the bottom of page uh, 100. And now it says change it back to portrait. So I guess I kind of wasted my time with that recentering. So let's go to page layout here and go to orientation and go back to portrait. And um, it did put this back in the right spot. And we want to click this, and this goes by tens if you click on the plus sign. So three or four times will get us back to 100% and then we're going to save it. Uh, now we're in activity 1.15 on page 101 and we do some formatting of text and this is pretty much the same not just in Word applications but almost everywhere. Uh, to the left of Skyline Metro Grill uh, I want to move my mouse over here and click and when the uh, cursor turns from pointing to the left to pointing to the right uh, if you click you'll select everything that's in that uh, line that we're next to and um, now I want to go to the home tab and I want to go and I want to go to my paragraph group which is where the alignment stuff is and click on center and then I want to go to the font names here and I want to choose uh, Cambria so we're gonna have to do a little bit of scroll in here Everything's in alphabetical order. So there's Cambria. And um, now what I want to do is um, scroll back to the top of the font gallery and under theme fonts select Calibri Light. And that would be this one right here. So now we're kind of back to where we started on that one as well. Okay, and now we're on number five on the top of page 102. Uh, with this still selected, what I want to do is I want to change the size to 36. Okay, now if the number you want is not there, you can just type, click up here, and when it turns blue, you can type on top of it. And, um, oh, and now we're going back to 20. So, let's 
go to 20 and that's what it's going to look like and now I want uh, the font color which is this button right here and click on the down arrow and I want to use my theme colors I want to go to the last column which is green and I want to do accent six okay last column last color so that'd be this one right here and uh, if you pause the mouse it says green accent six darker 50 percent okay and to the left of the word two over here um, we want to select all four of those lines so just click and drag with the white arrow pointing to one o'clock and we want to go to our font color again and uh, actually just click on the button and if you do then they change to the same color that we used last uh, this will always have the last color that you selected on it so if you're doing the same thing lots of times it makes it a little bit easier and now we want to select the paragraph uh, that begins uh, in the spring and if you triple click let's try that again I must have just not clicked fast enough one two three and they'll select the entire paragraph and with it selected click the font color button and this time we want the sixth column the last color which is uh, this so it's orange accent two, darker 50 percent and that's what it says in number 11 so we'll change that and now I want to select the word two and I want to make it bold and italic here's bold which is also control B and here's italic which is also control I and um, I want to turn italic off click on it again these are just toggles bold italic and underline up here and that's probably a good place to stop our first video